Have you ever thought to yourself, boy, howdy, I want to make a video game, but I have no skill or ability or programming experience or 3D modeling experience or overall drive or ambition or time? Or Who cares about any of that stuff? All right, not me. None of that's stopping me, okay? And look at what I've accomplished. Is your birthday Now I know what you're thinking, all right? But 3Bomb, your game looks amazing. Where, where can I play it? How do I play this? Can you send me a Steam link? Can you send me an itch.io page? Can I download this and play it? How did you manage all this with no previous experience? And your intuition serves you well. I know I said no experience, but uh, that's clickbait, kind of. Before this project, I spent a few weeks working on a first-person player controller until I got bored and eventually stopped working on it because I have no skill or ability or programming experience or 3D modeling. You're not here to see any of that garbage, okay? You're here to see some of this garbage. So why make a drift game, huh? I don't know. Cars are fun. Games are fun. Making games is fun. How would you know? You've never even made one. Why are you yelling? Now what does every driving game need? That's right, a badass whip. And since this is my driving game and I make the rules, I use my real car as a starting point. Here is my real car in all her glory and splendor. Five-speed manual, you know, 2002, Lexus IS 300. You don't see those every day, okay? It's yellow, yeah, it's yellow. And that, you know, puts some people off. But I like the yellow. And here is my flawless representation of it brought to life in Blender. Looks pretty good, huh? Liar. You know it's not a good model. It's bad. But that was five months ago. And five months ago, me loved this model. So you're going to see a little bit more of it. Now, I've created a handful of new, much better models since then. Uh, but if you're interested in seeing those, go ahead and subscribe. I'll have at least two or three more videos about it, probably. So we have our model and we're ready to make it drive. Should be pretty easy, right? Yeah, actually, it's very easy. Uh, slap on a camera, some wheel colliders, throw together a little test level with Pro Builder, write a little script to apply torque to the wheels, and you're rolling. I mean, check this thing out. I started tweaking some values, dialing in the feel of the car. I was really starting to enjoy working on this thing. I added some jumps to my test level. I worked on a cell shading effect that I definitely didn't copy from YouTube. Mm-hmm, yeah, I understand all of this. My little car controller was really coming together. But there was one thing that was a little bit weird. It took forever to break, and I ignored it at first, uh, but as I was tweaking settings, it was getting worse. I spent ages changing wheel collider values. Set this to 1. Okay, set it to 1,000. Okay, that feels the same. What are these values even really doing? You know what, let me just check Unity's documentation on wheel colliders. There's nothing here, pretty much. Alright, surely someone on the internet knows. Okay, I'm seeing a lot of people with the same issue, and nobody's really giving me a solution. I'll just go back and recheck my code. And would you look at that? Turns out... I was using negative torque to apply brakes instead of brake torque. And Unity says that is not allowed or highly discouraged. You're not, you shouldn't do that. Finally, after all this time tweaking and testing, searching the internet, I had found the issue. I adjusted the code, gave her a whirl, and it was fixed. Ha! You wish, dumbass! You didn't fix shit! Dog hair. Alright, so it wasn't fixed. Okay, I'd hit a wall, so I did the only thing I knew how to. Thread after thread after thread of people trying to solve this delay issue without success, ultimately coming to the conclusion that Unity's wheel colliders are just broken. But wait, what's this? 
a response I had skipped over. Unity's physics does what it's supposed to do. If you apply like 5,000 newtons of force at the start, it's obviously going to slip. Think of it in real world terms. This comment gracefully led me to a disappointing but alleviating realization. You see, when I set up my wheel colliders, I wanted my game to be like toy cars, kinda. So I made the cars weigh like very little. And if you combine light weight with large amounts of never ending torque, uh, your wheels spin like fucking crazy. So my car was doing less of this and more of this. And in real life, the amount of torque your car generates is limited. You can only apply so much before the motor just won't make anymore. And the torque that you do apply is still limited by the traction of your tires, but this isn't real life. So the entire time I was pressing the gas to drive my car, my wheels were acting kind of like this. So anytime I wanted to brake, I had to wait for my wheels to work their way down from supersonic speeds. Now that I knew what the problem was, I could start to fix it. I started tracking important information about my car, like current RPMs, speed, torque, all the things I should have been doing from the beginning, basically. Now I could look at my RPMs and see when things were going bananas, and that made finding the right balance of torque versus slip pretty easy. I was noticing quite a lot of understeer now, which is the exact opposite of what you want in a drift game, unless your game is titled High School Girls Wrecking Their 1995 Honda Civics in Rainy Conditions, in which case it's perfect. <laughs> I added adjustable downforce to correct the understeer, and it worked pretty well. Uh, now that we were driving without unintentional traction loss, I started working on how to implement intentional traction loss. I added a handbrake and drizzled in a little secret sauce, and now we were drifting. From this point, I thought it was important to get an indication of when we were actually engaged in a drift. After a few attempts at calculating drift angle and failing, I learned about vector 3 dot. Vector 3 dot dot. I plugged in my velocity and the left and right transform of my car and bada bing, bada boom. I could not only detect if you're drifting, but I could also detect how steep of an angle you're drifting at, which is pretty useful to me. Oh yeah, I also got tired of using my mouse and keyboard for a driving game, so I added full controller support around this time too. I used Unity's new input system. With those things sorted out, it was time to make my first track. I modeled one in Blender, added it to the project. The road was fucked. Deleted it, started over from scratch, got something I liked, threw it in Unity, and... It wasn't too bad. My plan is to eventually replace this simple map with multiple detailed maps, but this one will work for fleshing out the mechanics I want for my game. And that brings me to a very important question that hopefully you can help me with. I'm now at the point where I'm ready to create new maps that are more engaging and fun, but the type of maps I make are determined by a gameplay choice that I have to make. If you could play this game, would you rather have track style maps with only one path where you could try and set the highest possible score for a lap? You'd have like a ghost car that replays your highest score lap. Uh, you could have like leaderboards where people can compete, stuff like that. Or would you rather have larger open maps with multiple paths where the objective of the game is to get the highest possible score, crashing and keeping from drifting for too long would reset your score kind of like Forza Horizon. This type of gameplay would encourage finding fun routes to discover and experiment with. I don't think I'm interested in offering both options. I don't really want to split my gameplay down the middle. I'd rather lean into one or the other. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments. Any input I can get would be appreciated. Regardless of which gameplay decision we decide to move forward with, here are my sort of thoughts and plans for the game. I want to add on score bonuses for things like long drifts, back-to-back -back drifts, high-speed drifts, 360s, full sideways, uh, bonuses for destroying objects or doing jumps, stuff like that. Almost like a little trick book where different maneuvers give you extra score or a multiplier. Think like MX vs. ATV or MX Unleashed, you know, skate games, Tony Hawk games, that kind of stuff. As you play the game and pull off these maneuvers, you'll be passively earning a currency that can be spent on new cars and maps. I'd also like to add something more than just drifting. The drifting is really fun, but I feel like there needs to be more gameplay. I consider things like pedestrians that can be hit sending ragdolls flying across the map, traps that smash your car or send you flying or explode, or maps that have loops and jumps and spirals and boost pads, kind of track mania style. I'm still mulling it over, but if you have any good ideas for how to expand the gameplay, please share them. And yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching. If you like this style of video, let me know. Uh, I've got more in the pipeline, so consider subscribing. And thanks.